Charlie, the Migrating Snail. Book One, The Journey Begins. Read by the author. That's me, Anthony James Donnelly. Copyright 2019. All rights reserved. Chapter One, Snail Garden. Life was pretty much business as usual in the garden. All the snails went about their daily chores, content in their work. They were happiest if the weather was not too hot and not too cold. There was protection from the birds, and there was plenty of juicy lettuce to munch on. Well, that is, most of the snails were. Charlie was different. He was young and curious. It was his continuous questioning that made his friends nickname him Little Charlie Why because he seemed far too small to have all these silly questions in his little head. But his head was full of questions. A head full of questions that wanted answers. The new sun was rising in the morning sky as a cool summer breeze blew through the garden. Change was in the air. The sun rays reflected the dewdrops hanging on the moist grass. There was a bumper lettuce crop that year and all the snails were busily harvesting the leaves ready for the coming winter. All the snails, that was, except Charlie. He had separated himself from the crowd. He wandered alone slowly in his favourite part of the garden, deep in thought. His parents had gone to great lengths to teach their little son to talk and to come out of his shell more, and then regretted it. Hardly a day went by without Charlie asking another question. He wanted to know the answers to everything. Why were snails snails? Why was the sun warm when it shone? Why is there always more to learn? Why? At present, he was thinking about a recent event. Uncle Harry, his favourite uncle, had been out late in the heat of the afternoon, a thing snails should never do. Harry was busily minding his own business when all of a sudden, that dangerous shadow that snails instinctively know all too well fell across him. Before he had time to react, the large blackbird had swooped. Its beak cracked through his shell like a bullet, and poor old Uncle Harry was carried off into the vast expanse of the sky, never to be seen again. Charlie stopped and looked up at the blanket of cloud that formed the ceiling of the garden. Somewhere up there was his favourite uncle. Only his memory remained in the minds of his relatives back in the confines of the garden. Charlie remembered the interesting tales of adventure he used to tell about his life. If Charlie had been picked on or bullied by the other snails, his stories would always cheer him up. Secretly, Charlie believed that Uncle Harry had just gone off on another special journey somewhere and would return any minute full of even more exciting tales to tell. Charlie's head was still a mass of questions. Why did the birds eat the snails? To him, his questioning was quite normal, and he couldn't understand why the others weren't interested. They all thought he was silly and disruptive to think about such stupid things, especially when there was important work to be done. Even Charlie's parents didn't seem to understand his reason for questioning things. At first, they thought his questions were harmless, but as time went on and his questions became harder to answer, Charlie became a nuisance. In the end, they just gave him the same answer. That's life, son. Frank, Charlie's father, was busy working with the other snails on the lettuce plantation as his son slowly wandered past in a daze of thought. Frank stopped briefly and looked down at his poor little son from the large leaf he was working on. Charlie stood staring out into space, his mind seemingly on nothing. Charlie, called Frank, will you come up here and give me a hand for a minute? Charlie gave no answer. His mind was miles away. Charlie! He looked up at his father. Oh no, thought Frank, seeing Charlie's expression, knowing what was coming next. Dad, began Charlie. Why do all the snails work so hard? Son, we'd all love to just drift around like you, but there's important work to be done. Everyone else is happy to help except you, said Frank angrily. But why? asked Charlie. Charlie had asked one question too many. 
He was not content to be just a snail like his parents and all the other snails in the garden. He wanted to know why. Why, why, why? But his father had had enough. This question was the last straw. If you really want to find all these stupid answers so much, then go off and find them for yourself. We're all far too busy working, snapped Frank. That was that. Charlie realised his father was right. He had outgrown the limitations of his parents in the garden. Now there was only one thing for it. Take his father's advice and go off alone in search of all these wonderful answers. He certainly had plenty of room in his little shell to store them all. Perhaps somehow he would even grow for the experience. Maybe then, when he returned with all this knowledge, they would take more notice of him. He quickly packed up his shell, waved goodbye to everyone on the plantation and headed off beyond the boundaries of the garden. The summer winds of change began to blow harder, giving him a little push on his way. He had not gone far outside the garden when he felt rather hungry. He crawled inside his little shell and pulled out a juicy lettuce leaf to munch on. After a few small bites, he began to feel rather groggy. His little head span, thumping with a loud beat. He could sense something coming nearer. A rhythmic pounding. The sound of large footsteps coming closer. Being a snail, and notoriously slow at that, he knew he would not be able to flee to safety fast enough, especially as he felt so light-headed. He looked around frantically for some small crevice or shelter to hide in, but there was nothing, not even a crack in the pavement. The thumping of the shoes came closer and closer. He did the only thing left to do. He went inside to the safety of his little shell and prayed for the danger to pass. His head was spinning. His heart was pounding. He could hardly tell the difference between the thumping shoes and him. The beating echoed round his tiny shell louder and louder. In his dizzy head, he pictured the enormous pair of shoes beating a path towards him. Two large soles like huge hammers thumping on the pavement. The pavement he clung to with fear. Nearer and nearer came the noise. He held on to the lettuce leaf for comfort as the noise reverberated inside his shell. The noise seemed to come from everywhere. Numb with fear, Charlie prayed. An age seemed to pass. Charlie listened. His heart was pumping louder than ever. He listened more closely. The hammering had stopped. He waited. Had they gone? As his heartbeat slowed, he couldn't hear anything. He cautiously emerged from his shell and looked around slowly. He couldn't see anything. The only sound was his deep, heavy breathing and his machine gun heart. Then the thought struck him. Slowly, very slowly, Charlie looked up. There, directly above him, was the shoe. It had come down right on top of him and stopped. No wonder he couldn't hear the footsteps anymore. He looked around and laughed with relief. He was so small that he fitted neatly underneath the instep of the shoe. Before he could blink, the large pair of feet pounded off again quickly and Charlie was left alone. His head was still spinning, but he thought for a moment how lucky he had been. Being small wasn't so bad. His journey for answer had almost come to a very abrupt end. Being so small did have its advantages after all, he thought. The shock of this first encounter made him remember how hungry he was. So he munched some more on the delicious lettuce leaf. The more he ate, the drowsier he became. His little feelers started to wilt. His eyelids became heavy and his curious little mind began to wander. He mused over this first experience. Sleepily, he proclaimed it as a lucky omen and began to dream of all the exciting adventures that lay before him. All those fascinating people and places he would see. All those wonderful answers he would discover. The wind blew harder. His mind wandered further. 
Charlie clung harder to the lettuce leaf to stop it blowing away. He felt very weary. The wind became stronger. He slid back inside his little shell and slowly, very slowly, fell fast asleep. Stronger and stronger blew the wind. Little Charlie Snail just slept and dreamt.